The Sharp MD MS702 was one of the first smaller portable mini disc recorders. I gotta tell you, I was super excited to find one of these old MD MS702s on eBay. Why, you ask? It's a big, bulky, old, SP only recorder, right? Well, it just happens to be my very first MD device more than 20 years ago. Just holding this thing brings back a ton of memories. I used to sit for hours recording and editing tracks on this tiny display. I was glad to find one on eBay, but these are infamous for a disc error. Let's try my luck and test a disc. And there you have it, the dreaded talk error A. If you've Googled this, you know it could be a gear failure. So let's open it up. As usual, I start with the bottom casing. Gently slide off the battery door. Two more screws right on the back center. and gently pry from the battery door side. As you can see, there were five sets of delicate ribbon cables to remove here. That long blue one is actually covering two others. Let's remove the top, since we can see the cables are going towards that side. As usual, just a few screws. Place them where you can remember where they go. Now to gently remove the ribbon cables with the help of some tweezers. Be very gentle pulling back the tabs, just a millimeter or so on each side. There's a strip of tape here. Peel that off gently.
Now for the next one. Pay attention to where it enters the board below the battery slot. Now for the tiny one under the blue cable. Now for the last bottom one. Start by lifting the tape. Then gently pull back the tabs on each side. All five cables are now loose. Let's loosen some screws that are holding the mechanism on the other side. First one is under that tiny ribbon cable. Next, by the battery slot. And the last is in the bottom corner. Gently open it like a book, starting from the eject lever side. Remember, ribbon cables are holding it on the other side. Make sure the cables aren't snagged or stuck, and we'll gently wriggle out the mechanism. Put the case aside for now. And here's where the magic happens. See that gear? We need to get under it to check the worm gear. We can start by removing the screw holding the laser sled rod. Save this piece for later. This flat gear is held in by a tiny plastic C-clip. Cover it with your finger, then gently pry it off. If you don't cover it, it can fly off, never to be seen again. Once the clip is off, the gear lifts right off. Some lint, let's get rid of that. Let's loosen the clamp holding the sled to that guide rod. Great, now we're able to remove the gear shaft and examine that worm gear.
unless it's really bad, it's hard to tell with the naked eye or, or a kitty microscope. But a gentle twist confirms it's cracked. It should not slip off the rod like that. Now, just a quick point, there were multiple gear lengths and sizes throughout Sharp's mini disc devices. Check these out. As you can see, this is yet another style, which I've been keeping track of on my blog. Okay, so what now? Well, we need to replace that gear. It's hard to see here, but I've got the original, a white replacement, and a brass replacement. The brass one is really for an RC car, but it's about the right size, though it's not helical. I'd like to try it later, but let's go with the replacement plastic one. I had to heat it with a hair dryer and press it onto the shaft. And just like that, I have a new worm gear attached and ready to test. Since we're in here, and this is more than 20 years old, let's lube and then clean the lens. A little white lithium grease on the sled rail and rod should do. To fit that gear shaft back in, we'll want to remove the screw holding the sled to the rod. That will give us enough room. Now slide that rod back. And with the help of some tweezers, put the end into the black fitting. Now we push the rod back into place. A bit more lube. And let's secure the sled back to the guide rod.
Let's get this metal piece back on. It holds the worm gear in place. There's a tiny black tab that sticks through a hole on the metal plate. One screw. Oh yeah, let's clean that flat gear before putting it back into place. Some isopropyl alcohol to clean off old lubricant. And then we'll add a bit of new lube. Lay the gear into place. Place the C-clip where it should be, then press down until it clicks. While we're here, let's clean the lens. Everything looks good. Time to put it back together. My plan is to pull more of the blue ribbon cable through so I have room to work, then slot the mechanism back in. We'll need to carefully thread this thinner ribbon cable through a slot below the battery area. Now 
this test fit looks like I can angle it in from the disk slot side. Okay, now we're ready. I've pulled the tiny cable all the way through. We'll just have to put that back later. But at least I have room to work. Carefully thread that thin cable below the battery compartment. There's a small gap. Once it's through, grab it from the other side. Keep an eye on the blue cable. Make sure it's not snagged or pinched. Gently angle in the mechanism. Disc slot side first. It should settle in nicely. Pull the bottom ribbon cables through. Make sure there's enough length to connect them, otherwise they could be snagged or caught. Now grab that last tiny ribbon cable and feed it under the blue one. There it is. Grab it and ensure it's flat under the blue cable. A little help from the tweezers. And that's it. We should be ready to screw down the mechanism. I started with the one by the battery. Then the bottom corner. And lastly, the one under the tiny ribbon cable. Before I close it up, I want to test the slot in eject. They can be finicky. I'll add a screw by the eject so I can test it. It's a bit stuck, and I can see why. The slot is a bit bent because there's something pushing down from the inside. Let's unscrew and take a look. There it is. 
At the top center, there's a tab that needs to slot into the top plastic cover over the disc slot. Remove the lid and angle it back in, slot side first, so the tongue catches the top of the disc slot. Test looks good. Let's screw it on. Just the usual screws along the top. And now let's get those ribbon cables clipped in. Start with a tiny one. Again, be gentle and use tweezers. Next, the one we slotted under the battery area. Then the long blue one. And push down the tape. Next, the wide flat one at the bottom. And lastly, the folded one with tape on it. We're all set. Everything's back in and looks good. This one is surprisingly clean inside. Nothing to do here except close it up. As always, make sure your hold switch is in the right place. Then angle the bottom case on, jack side first. <laughs> oh yeah, I was testing the eject. Let's remove that and reuse it.
A few more screws and we'll be ready to test. Don't forget the screws on the back. Slide on the battery door. Grab my power supply. I don't have the flat lithium battery yet. As usual, let's test with every little thing. And the moment of truth. And there you have it, it's working. A new gear has got this 26 year old player back in action. Now, where did I put that remote? Hey, this was super satisfying to fix since this was my very first MD recorder back in the day. I hope this helps you too. Thanks for watching.